This question states, if a thin-walled cylindrical pressure vessel with radius r and wall thickness, wall thickness t has internal pressure p, what is the absolute maximum shear stress? Well, once again, we are dealing with a state of principal stresses. These states of principal stresses make drawing more circles pretty simple and allow us to be able to calculate out the absolute maximum shear stress pretty quickly. So we have here a uh, hoop stress, which is going to be sigma y. And for a thin walled pressure vessel that is cylindrical, we can say that's going to be the internal pressure times the radius divided by t. For the sigma x, the longitudinal or axial stress, we have that the thin walled cylinder will have a stress in the longitudinal direction, sigma x, of pr over 2t. Sigma z is going to be zero, and we've talked about why that is in the past. It has to do with a small thickness, it has to do with the fact that r over t is also large, and so whatever stress we would have in this direction, which might be something equal to or less than the internal pressure acting in the radial direction through the element, is going to be much, much less than what you have with the sigma x and the sigma y, as we've calculated here. So let's go ahead and start drawing our more circle, or more circles. We have a sigma tau axes or uh, coordinate system as drawn here, we know that the larger one is going to be PR over T. And we know that halfway across, we're going to have PR over 2T. We can also see that we have a, a point sigma Z equal to zero. So if we draw the three points of interest, we have them just like that. And the circles that we draw, so this would be in the xy plane, this would be in the xz plane, and then this one right here would be in the yz plane. Like that. Okay, and so we're interested in the absolute maximum shear stress that we can calculate from the yz plane. And um, how do we calculate that out? Well, we have 2 times tau absolute max is going to be equal to the diameter. So that's going to be our sigma y minus 0, or we can write pr over t. So the absolute maximum shear stress is just going to be pr over 2t like that okay and uh and so once again we use more circle and very minimal algebra uh, but using some geometry to calculate out what the absolute maximum shear stress would be and this is a common result and unlike the case where you have the spherical pressure vessel what we see here is that uh, the absolute maximum shear stress is greater. It's, it's actually twice um, the value that we had for the spherical pressure vessel. So remember, we drew it as a dot when we were just thinking about the in-plane shear stress. Uh, but the absolute maximum shear stress does have a value, does have a tau. And so that kind of, uh, as, we, as we discuss uh, failure criteria in the future, that also kind of makes sense that, yes, in fact, these these vessels, if they're using a uh, ductile material, they can in fact fail um, due, to, due, due to the shear stress that is present. And once again, as we've discussed prior, uh, you know, in, an, in, in a world where we didn't have kind of boxes or we didn't need the practicality of the cylindrical pressure vessels due to fabrication or due to like stacking or storage or transport, uh, the spherical pressure vessel would be able to handle more um, internal pressure, right, for a given amount of material and a given amount of, uh, of volume, okay, because it's a, a sphere. Uh, but uh, in practice, we, we often find ourselves using 
cylindrical pressure vessels. So this uh, calculation is also obviously important. Thank you for watching. I hope you have found this example useful.